The previous clip there was from last night, and we had kind of a really bad windstorm. And here's what happened. Um, first of all, a little background. This house is built in the 1920s. And um, a lot of the wiring in here is original knob and tube, which is actually still in the code book and still legal. But we had a problem here with this bamboo. And it's interesting because prior to the windstorm, this bamboo was out away from the roof quite a bit. But, um, you can see here, this thing here is called the weather head. So what happens is, is the, the meter is usually right here. And the wires, the feed wires from the utility basically come into here. And this wire is old cloth wire. And basically what happened is, is it failed and the insulation failed and you can see you can see let me see right come on focus on that you stupid thing well it doesn't want to focus there's too many lines but basically what happened was is it touched together up there and it shorted and it was a dead short See what it does and I don't even think this is legal anymore as it comes out of the weather head there and it goes up to that second level of the roof there and that's where the utility was tied off you can see that burnt in there I could keep saying there over and over and over again I'm sure the trolling in the comments and you're an amateur idiot comments are going to be rolling hard on this video. So, that shorted together. There's no fuse. And when I came out here, when I got called to come out here, um, this wire was literally glowing red for about 100 feet to where it connects to the pole and smoking and on fire. And it's a good thing I had a fire extinguisher with me because uh, I probably saved this house. Um, so this is the wire here from the utility. And you can, you see the burnt plastic there on the ground and the, see that, that's puddled aluminum. Puddled aluminum. So there's no fuse for this. There's a fuse on the primary of the transformer. But I was looking at this wire and I was trying to figure out how many amps this it would take to do this to this and it's not it's not as heavy of a drop line as I thought but a thousand amps maybe yeah, see here is This is, this is not that big a wire at all. This is 12 gauge, 10 gauge. I think that's 10 gauge. Anyway, you can see we had a little fire starting here. And then as it goes out to the street where the pole is, there were several other little fires that I was able to nail with a, uh, carbon dioxide extinguisher so this is very this is very crappy there's several splices in here anyway I'm not going to go into that but essentially what I did and this is going to win the Mickey Mouse of the Year award but basically what I did for the night and the day because I have to replace these wires 
that go from here up to there. What I did was, I just, this is a 10 gauge extension cord with an outlet on it. I just back fed the 120 into here. So basically we've got 120, 120, and the neutral. And the two on the outside make up 220. Well, there's nothing in this house that runs on 220. So those are just tied together and then the neutral. So this is old, old, old school. Now they told me this was four gauge wire running. This right here is four gauge wire. So that's going to be a, an absolute interesting operation to try and repair that. I don't know why they want four gauge. I don't know why they want four or five feet of four gauge wire to connect a ten gauge wire. That that's kind of cheesy. And basically, this here is uh, about 120 feet long and it's run to one of the other houses and um, this house has not gone over 500 watts and I told the person that lives here don't use anything like electric heaters or hair dryers or microwaves until this is corrected so it's literally just a modern low consumption refrigerator and some LED lights so um, it's fused on both ends of course it's it's fused at 15 amps on the other end there's no risk of anything going wrong there um, so yeah this this right here this is gonna be entertaining I've been working on this for a while and this screw is not coming out and I can't get any leverage on it and these screws are not coming out and up there there's two screws holding that lid on that those are not coming out this is all from the 1920s so what I've decided to do is I've got this broken loose here and this is loose so what I'm gonna do tomorrow because it's starting to get dark is I'm gonna pop this off I pop that off um, and I'm going to pull this whole, I'm going to pull from here up to there off the wall so that I can um, put it down on the ground and get some leverage on it and clean it up all nice and inspect it. Let's go over this real quick where I'm at. And before you say, why don't you just replace the whole thing, I say, why don't you just send me the money to buy it. Um, had to use the torch to get that one loose. And had to grind these the heads off of these. There's just no way they're going to come out. And I hope I can get them out uh, and replace them with cast iron. I mean with, uh, replace them, that's cast iron. And you can see where it arced here, right here it touched right there. And I found the other the other part here where it arced together. I don't know, there's so many splices and so many different types of wire here and maybe this is where it arced right here. Well, I don't know, you could clearly see where the you can see how hot that got where the uh Aluminum had puddled, but this is four gauge. I got 30 feet of six gauge and 30 feet of four gauge You right, see how I've done the neutral here where I didn't actually cut the wire so the neutral is actually is just going to continue on through to the neutral bus bar in the box and This makes sense to me not to have a splice here because if the neutral ever goes open then one side of your house, whichever side's got the lightest load, is going to float up, you know, to 220 volts. So, um, yeah, a good solid neutral is very important. So check out this point where it arced. 
check out that puddled copper isn't that beautiful so here we got tin uh, four gauge cloth and then it comes to um, one of those screw clamps you know it looks like it's tin gauge copper to another screw clamp and then to I don't know what this is probably 10 gauge or 6 gauge and then it comes over here to another connector to 4 gauge aluminum okay we're all back to together now wait ready for uh, the utility to come out and hook it up and I got my feed spliced back in there and there are the new wires. You're supposed to tape the neutral white as a marker. But um, yeah, I went through and I fixed a lot of uh, rusty, crusty joints, loose uh, joints, and checked my voltages and there's no loss anywhere. So I think we're all good now. It's much better than it's been. Just go ahead and seal this up, this video up. They uh, reinstalled the electrical service this morning and they put new uh, a new 4 gauge feed line in. It was 6 gauge before and they went through and checked everything in here and measured all the voltages and everything looked good so uh, my wire measurements were just about perfect so that's a good thing so uh, thanks for watching 